So let's continue our discussion on mutual inductance. Let's suppose a coil, let's call it coil number two, with n2 number of loops is placed inside a thin long solenoid that contains n1 number of loops of wire. Now suppose the area of the loops of coil number two is given by A2, the area of loops of the solenoid is given by A1, and the length of the solenoid is given by L. We want to find the equation for the mutual inductance of coil number two as a result of our solenoid. Now before we begin our three steps, let's essentially look at the following diagram that describes what is going on. So, an electric current, which is an alternating current, a changing electric current, is moving through the coils of our solenoid, as shown in the following diagram. And that's given by I1. Now, as our electric current is traveling through the coils of the solenoid, it is creating a magnetic field. And that magnetic field is changing because our current is also changing over time. So this change in magnetic field is given by the following blue magnetic field lines. Now some of these field lines will travel through the loops of coil number two that is placed inside our solenoid. Now each one of these loops of coil number two has an area given by A2. And a certain quantity of these magnetic field lines will travel through those loops. Now, because our magnetic field is changing, that will create a changing magnetic flux inside the loops of coil number two. And by Faraday's law, a changing magnetic flux in coil number two will create an EMF inside coil number two. And that EMF will in turn create an induced electric current in the coils of loop number two. And this principle is known as mutual inductance and it's given by the symbol uppercase M. So let's begin our problem by looking at step number one. In step number one we have to recall the equation for the magnitude of our magnetic field produced inside the solenoid as a result of the electric current traveling through the wires of our solenoid. So this equation was derived in the lecture on solenoids. So, the magnetic field B produced inside the solenoids as a result of electric current I1 is given by mu naught, the permeability of free space constant, multiplied by N1, the number of loops of wire in our solenoid, multiplied by I1, our electric current traveling through the loops of the solenoid, divided by L, the distance, the length of our solenoid. Notice, in this section of the solenoid, we omitted our coils so that this inner coil, this coil number two, becomes visible. So let's move on to step number two. In step number two, we want to essentially define our magnetic flux that is traveling through the loops of coil number two as a result of the loops inside our solenoid. So, we want to define the magnetic flux that passes through coil 2 as a result of the solenoid. So, let's define the magnetic flux through coil number 2 as a result of the solenoid using the following value, using the following variable, so phi to 1. Now, by definition of magnetic flux, magnetic flux is equal to the dot product of our magnetic field that passes through the loops and our area of those loops. Now the area of the loops found in coil 2 is given by A2 and our magnetic field that passes is given by B. So B dot product A2. Now by definition of dot product, the dot product of two vectors is equal to the product of the magnitude of the two vectors multiplied by the cosine theta, which is the angle between our vector area 2 and 
our magnetic field. Now, as described in the following diagram, the angle for this case is zero. But if we twist, if we rotate our coil number two, the angle might change. So let's define this cosine of the unknown angle theta. Now, from step one, we were able to derive the following equation. So let's essentially replace our B with this entire equation. So we take B and we replace it with this equation. So we have A2 cosine theta multiplied by this equation. And that becomes mu naught multiplied by N1 times I1 times A2 times cosine of angle theta divided by L. Finally, let's move on to step three. So in our discussion on mutual inductance, we were able to define the following equation. So this equation essentially comes from experimental results. So our quantity of mutual inductance given by M acting on coil 2 as a result of the solenoid is equal to N2, the number of coils in coil number 2 multiplied by the magnetic flux traveling through coil number 2 as a result of our solenoid divided by I1, the electric current traveling through the wires of the solenoid that is creating this magnetic flux. So, in step two, we were able to derive this equation. So now let's replace phi two one with this entire equation. And that's exactly what we do. Notice I one and I one appears on top and bottom. We can cancel those out and we get the following result. So we see that the mutual inductance of coil number two that is placed inside our solenoid is equal to the following equation. Mu naught, the permeability of free space multiplied by N1, N2, where N1 is the number of loops in a solenoid, N2 is the number of loops inside coil number two, multiplied by A2, the area of the loops of coil number two, multiplied by cosine of the angle theta, the angle between our face area, our face vector, and our magnetic field B, divided by our length, the length of this entire solenoid. So this gives us our mutual inductance of our coil inside our solenoid.